big. Hey, you all, Farmer Jesse here. So this year, I want to do more crop specific breakdowns. And today I want to tackle bulb onions. Oh, you should flash like something where I'm just like tackling a big onion. I don't know, what's a budget? So we'll cover varieties, why you probably shouldn't trim your onions before planting them, um, in row spacing, growing, curing, storage, all of it. So let's do it. First things first, if you're not subscribed to this channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you are subscribed, you're awesome. And if you were like, I really love this channel, it's super helpful, you can support this work by going to notillgrowers.com and picking up a copy of the Living Soil Handbook or a no-till grower's hat like so, or other merch, um, or join us at the Patreon page at patreon.com slash no-till growers. Awesome. So these crop breakdowns are almost always the most intensive videos that I do, but inevitably I will miss some stuff. So make sure to add your insight and experience in the comments section all right, uh, let's start with varieties because I may not be able to use the same varieties here in Kentucky, zone 6B, as you can based on your region because onion bulbing is triggered by day length and people who live further north of us get longer days than we do and people who live further south of us get shorter days and also get to grow citrus, which I'm very bitter about, gotta be honest. But onions break down into three basic categories, long day, short day, an intermediate day, which is sometimes referred to as day neutral. This refers to the number of hours of sunlight that trigger the plant to start creating a bulb. So essentially long day onions start forming bulbs when daylight reaches 14 to 16 hours. Intermediate day onions start bulbing up around 12 to 14 hours of daylight and short day onions are in that more 10 to 12 hours of daylight range. If you uh, look at a map, it more or less breaks down like it does here on this handy map. Are you gonna put something up? I feel like I look ridiculous. From Johnny's selected seeds, um, there is some flexibility in regions. So if you see an intermediate day onion, for instance, that you want to grow in a long day region, you will still likely be able to do it and vice versa. Um, not all onions are listed as short or long day, but you will usually see some indication of where each variety makes the most sense. Some purveyors describe onion varieties by their adapted latitudes. For instance, um, our farm is on the 38th parallel, and so we look for onion varieties that are adapted for roughly that latitude. Uh, the ones that have worked best for us are storage onions like Patterson, Copra, and New York Early. For sweet early onions, I like the Walla Walla types like Candy. Uh, in fact, we've had luck on certain years sowing these candy varieties uh, in the field in August and then harvesting full-size bulb onions in the spring. But it's a little risky in our region. Uh, we usually cover them, so starting them in the winter in the greenhouse may be a safer bet in general. Uh, these sweet varieties don't store super well, but are nice sold fresh with greens on and then when they get that big bulb. For reds, I like Rosa di Milano and Cabernet and Red Carpet. For shallots, which are wildly expensive seeds, get a good get really good at growing onions before you dive in too deep into shallot production. Um, but shallots, we've had uh, good luck with Matador, even though it's adapted for a slightly longer day length. Like I said, there's some flexibility there. There are so many varieties out there, but one thing that may limit your choice is if you intend to buy seeds, sets, or plants. If you have a greenhouse or a place to manage seedlings for a long period of time, or even a covered space like a cold frame, then starting from seeds is going to be the most economical way to grow onions and give you the most options in terms of variety. Uh, they are slow to grow from seed, but not as finicky as other crops onions aren't. Uh, just always use fresh seed within one year of the date on the package because allium seeds do not store super well. Then there are onion sets. These are the miniature dried bulbs you see at garden centers and seed supply stores, and they grow fine bulbs, but you may be limited on varieties. And they tend to be far more expensive than seeds, but for a small garden, that may be fine. Onion plants are another option. These are just young plants, onion plants, that can be transplanted directly into the soil once you get them and then they grow fast. Uh, we grew from plants for many years, we just buy bulk plants, um, and it's a nice way to save a little time and space in the greenhouse versus starting your own 
onion plants. Um, onion plants bought in are not as cheap as seeds, but not as expensive as sets, especially when you buy them in bulk. Planting plants can be a little slow though, so keep that in mind. Um, now for the next few minutes, I'm going to talk about seed starting. So if you plan to buy sets or plants, you can just skip this part and go to this time here for spacing and curing and all those good things. Okay, so starting onions from seed is surprisingly easy. There are just a few things to consider. One, onions like a germination temperature of around 50 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit, or 10 to 24 degrees Celsius, um, and usually germinate within two weeks depending on temperature. Um, two, onions are biennials, so they cannot freeze and thaw a bunch of times. Otherwise, when you plant them, they will bolt, um, meaning go to seed. Uh, young onion plants can take a light frost, but generally you do not want the roots to freeze at all. So keeping the young plants protected in the greenhouse or wherever you are starting them is key to avoiding that. For us, we start our onions after the winter solstice in soil blocks with two to four seeds per block, depending on the onion. Uh, they can be started a little later, but generally speaking, the bigger the plant, that goes into the soil, the bigger the bulb you're gonna get out of it. So the bigger the plant that goes into the soil, the bigger the start, the bigger the bulb you're gonna get in return. So starting them as early as is reasonable is better. The earlier, the better. Um, the blocks are that we use are roughly one inch by one inch. So the equivalent would be probably like a 128 cell, though it's not a perfect comparison because the volume of a soil block that size is more than double the soil mix volume of a plastic cell tray, especially a 128. But anyway, we start our onion plants in the greenhouse and soil blocks around the solstice, like I said, but I have also started them in the greenhouse in a, just a small garden bed. Uh, this was effective, but it was not a very efficient idea. Getting them out without breaking them was a challenge. And then you have to separate each batch into individual onions. And it's just frankly not super fun. Uh, the blocks by comparison require no separating and can just be pulled from the trays and direct and planted directly. Um, I have also started onions in trays of deep soil, like microgreens, just sprinkling them on the top of a bunch of soil. And that's easier because you can just take that whole tray out to the field instead of uh, having to harvest them from the bed. We grow them now in their soil blocks until they are about four to six inches tall or 10 to 15 centimeters. And then we just plant them. Ready for things to get a little interesting? Well, per the recommendation of basically everyone, in order to get bigger bulbs, we have always trimmed our plants down a few inches prior to transplanting. So that would be like three or so weeks before we start transplanting. But we are no longer doing that. Uh, I've seen so many professional growers trimming onion tops that I assumed the research had been established that trimming the tops would boost bulb size or yield or something. But as they say, never assume because it makes an ass umed, which I think is Latin for something. Turns out, even though this idea of trimming your onions to improve size is absolutely run amok on the internet, with numerous websites calling it a, a garden hack of sorts, there is little to no research to back it up. In fact, in most of the research I can find, and there's quite a bit because onions are one of the more studied crops, uh, it seems that trimming the onion tops and or roots before transplanting actually reduces your onion yield, doesn't increase your bulb size. The genesis of this idea of trimming is actually from conventional production, where they were trying to find ways to reduce the difficulty of untangling onions because they wrap together. Uh, to transplant them more efficiently on, you know, in mechanically on a large scale because the onion plants and roots would all just get kind of wound together and it would make it difficult and slow it down. Yep, that's it. Trimming has nothing to do with yield and it may actually reduce your yield according to many studies and not to mention potentially increased disease susceptibility. So I think that's my first on-screen raspberry. Yep. Should have practiced it. So for transplanting, we usually transplant in mid-March and we'll likely cover them to avoid uh, those last few frosts and freezes um, of the winter. What you don't want is for an onion to believe that it has gone through two seasons, like I said, the biennial thing. Um, if it gets warm enough to grow, then cold, then warm enough to grow, then cold again, the next time it gets warm, the plant will believe it's been through a full cycle and eventually flower, also called bolting. 
Now, if bolting happens, all is not lost. You can remove the flower stalk or I guess grow them out and sell them to chefs or whatever. But if you remove the flower stalk early, the remaining bulb is still edible and studies show the bulb has roughly the same nutritional content as any other bulb onion. However, the bolted onions will not store very well. So don't bother curing them and just go ahead and sell them fresh. Okay, so let's talk about spacing and at planting time. There are sort of two main approaches to spacing, either single plants spaced closer together or blocks of plants spaced further apart. Um, since we seed our soil blocks in clusters of two to four seeds, we also transplant them that way, shooting for an average of three plants per block. Sorry, that's a lot of numbers. The multiple plants in blocks spaced further apart. Now, this may give you slightly smaller bulbs, but not by much in my experience. For us, we're going for a medium sized bulb in ease of planting and harvesting and yield per bed. So we're not splitting our multi-plant blocks up. We're just planting those two to four plants into each spot at roughly seven to eight inches apart in rows that are roughly seven to eight inches apart themselves. So it's like a seven, like an eight by eight or seven by seven grid. And it's that spacing is roughly what we use for lettuce, if that's helpful. If I were planting onion plants or sets, I would honestly use that same spacing and plant three plants in that same roughly seven to eight inch grid. But if you're using sets, you could more rapidly plant them a few inches apart, just sprinkling them, dropping them in a row. Um, and maybe that would give you slightly bigger bulbs. You can obviously do that with plants too. That's just really slow picking each plant and putting it really close together. If you are direct seeding your onions in the fall or late winter or something, which is not super common around here, but if you are, um, I would still aim to have at least two inches between each bulb or maybe three to four for walla, walla types, those bigger, fatter, sweet ones, um, or more like one inch for things like mini onions. Now, one big tip on onion care is to keep the weeds out. Onions, more than almost any other crop we grow, really do not do well with any sort of weed competition. And the moisture that the weeds can retain on the leaves of the onions and the bulbs, um, it can just lead to like rot issues and disease issues. So try um, to keep your onion beds as weed free as humanly possible. I know that's obvious with every crop, but especially onions. Now, onions are super slow to grow. They take basically forever. Um, and so, like I said, we plant them in March, but won't harvest them, you know, mostly until July. Uh, that said, if you wanted to go through and thin clusters out that have four or more onions and use those as fresh onions, go for it. Customers love them and they make a great display. What on earth did I just do to the word display? And they make a great display with the greens on. So apologies for the lack of B-roll footage here. But you will know it's time to harvest your onion crop when the greens begin to brown slightly and slump over, sort of like that. That's about as good as I can do. Once that happens, once the slump happens, um, go through and harvest them all at once, like just get them all out of there. Uh, when they are dry, like at a dry time of the day, usually in the middle of the day or at the end of the day, this is to avoid bringing do into your curing stage. So yes, get them out when the onions are relatively dry. Now for curing, uh, you will want a warm, dry area with, a, with decent ventilation. Uh, I like curing them either on pallets or off of the ground somehow in a greenhouse or a caterpillar tunnel uh, for two weeks before moving them to cold storage. Um, two weeks is somewhat arbitrary. You just want the tops right where the plant meets the bulb to be dry and you can feel it. You'll feel it'll still feel squishy. If it still feels squishy, it's not time to take them out of the curing process. If you don't have a greenhouse or caterpillar tunnel in which to cure them, put the onions on racks with a fan blowing on them in a warm, covered, dry area uh, like a shed or a barn. They need that air movement to rapidly get the moisture off and out. There is no one right way to cure them. Just try to put them in the best position to dry quickly so as not to rot. After they are cured, move them to a slightly breathable container in a cooler or as close to a cooler temperatures as you can get. Uh, a cooler will keep them for longer than a cellar, but the closer to 39 degrees Fahrenheit or three or four degrees Celsius that you can get, 
the better. Um, you don't want the container to be completely airtight so as not to encourage moisture retention and thus rotting. Um, and then depending on the variety, you, my friend, have a very stable bulb onion to sell, roast, grill, saute, skewer, the sky's the limit. I don't know if you can cook with the sky, but if you can, bonus. Anyway, uh, let me know what I missed what you would add and what varieties you like and any questions you have uh like this video if you like this video subscribe to the channel if you have not already and maybe if i help made you some money or made you some larger bulbs by telling you not to trim your plants consider signing up to be a patron at patreon.com slash no-till growers or by picking up a copy of the living soil handbook at no-tillgrowers.com or both both is like the lionel messi of buying stuff anyway thanks for watching we'll see you later Bye.